what's happening. What's going on, Rob? It is Wednesday, April the 28th of 2021. Oh, you dated us. I did. Yeah. Hey, I see you got the memo about the shirt today. We Just like are, Kip uh, last night. So We didn't plan this at all, but we are blue, and we are well wearing Wilson Audio. And guys, man, I hate to get all you guys here and tell you that Doug had to dip. Psych! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doug's in the house. We're going to bring him in here. And we're not going to waste any time because we have got so much to go over. Doug, what is up, my man? Yo, what's up, guys? How you doing? Man, good this, good this is... Good to meet you, uh, Doug. I Thanks only got to see you for on. like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know that, that you've met Rob. This is Rob High Five Vega. And, uh, I've this heard guy of you. Below I've never us. met you. Okay. Oh, yeah. geez, dude, sound man's heard of me. That's freaking oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, you're yeah. on. You're on the. Awesome, you're man. on the scene. The commenters. But no, let we. Me know. We. Uh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> we, we, we've been talking about Doug about having you on here for a while. Obviously, uh, your history in car audio. You know, kind of growing up around it and everything. We um, we just thought, man, it'd be awesome just to kind of take a trip back and talk about some of the stuff like you've seen over the years and you know, growing up in your dad's shop and everything. So I'm not going to waste any time because we have so many things we want to cover, <laughs> but I'm going to ask you right off the bat. Um, you know, obviously we know you as sound man, you make iPad dash kits now pretty much, you know, mm-hmm. you make videos every week, you do all that type thing. Tell us a little bit about, you know, you and car audio, how it got started. Like you just, were you in the stroller and your dad's like here, learn how to hook up these speakers or, you know, Pretty how did much. you get started? Um, actually when I remember a time when was one of his installers was first teaching me how to install a car stereo, I was probably, I was hanging out at my dad's shop. I had to be eight and he showed me how to, um, how did he do it? He grounded the radio to the chassis. And then he used the radio as a test light to find the constant. And then um, once he had the radio on, he used the radio to test for the speaker wires. So he did like everything with the stereo. And that's how I learned to install. I thought I knew how to do it from then on. I thought I was a pro. But yeah, like I remember hanging out at my dad's shop. I have some old pictures for you too. I emailed you some of the really old ones. Um like around the age of five or so since, I mean, probably as early as I could remember. And it was like the Cal Worthington days. So my dad would have events at his shop and have like a monkey that he rented. He had an elephant that he rented once. And it was like that kind of marketing back then, you know, and it was really retail based. And it started off with like boom boxes, speakers, house speakers, record needles, blank cassette tapes, eight track players, all that stuff. All right. I'm going to see if I can share the screen here. So we, so people who are watching this can actually see it. So let me, uh, let me put in the share here and you can tell me yeah, there how you far go. you want to check that right, out. Dude, that is that. Old <laughs> Look at those speakers. <laughs> Six by nines everywhere. Go to that top one. Yeah. That's the showroom. It's all barred up. Look at that. And now, I mean, where, that was, what's the location? I mean, you guys, did you move several times or was this? Yeah, my dad started in um, San Fernando Valley. See, okay, now all the way to the right of this picture, you can see that Frogger arcade machine tucked in the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still have that in no, my you shop. Don't. Yeah, nice. I still, it still works. But um, cool. this was, this shop was Sierra Highway in Canyon Country. And. Yeah, I remember bugging my dad. Here's his labor rates. Look at that. Oh, $40 wow. to install a radio. Yeah. $10 no, charge no. on return checks. No PayPal. <laughs> no cash <laughs> refunds. Exchange only. <laughs> that is classic. I, just, yeah, I dig so the like clothes, it, too. And they, yeah. yeah, there's a boom box. I see it. There's yep. an old Panasonic or something. So I, mean, I remember being in that shop. I was a kid, you know. So I was running around. This had to have been what late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, that had to be probably early. Yeah, probably like around eighty four, eighty two, maybe. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. That's I know. I wish you could display board right there, man. You got to yeah. redo that. 
I know. <laughs> You guys got to have my dad on sometime so we can yeah, tell you no some doubt. of the early stories. He's hey, Look, he's got a stack down there of uh, some kind of goodies. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's crazy. The, just seeing the speakers alone and, and how they, you know, had the trim rings around the six by nines back then. You know, if you got the ones that had silver, they yep. matched some of the interiors and, and they had the like three ways with the, all the same cone tweeters. <laughs> yeah. There's some crazy grill so designs awesome. back then. Yeah, man. So you're riding like your uh, your big wheel. Yep. He's the, probably riding, trying to ride it in the shop, and my dad is yelling <laughs> yeah. at me. You know, I remember he'd be talking to customers, and I'd be I'd bug him, and I'd tug on his shirt or whatever, and he's like, "Stop!" <laughs> Chase me away, you know, because yeah. I didn't understand what was going on. But <laughs> that is he's awesome. Trying to, he's, he's trying to make a sale, you know. Yeah. And I'm dad, over look here. at me. Look at me, Dad. Look at me. <laughs> Yeah. I got an 18 year old that still does that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. Stopped. Anybody who's listening and not watching this on YouTube, you definitely need to go to YouTube to see that. So, just so you can see those pics. Cause those are uh, definitely retro and, and show you what it was back in the early eighties. And it's so cool just to have all that history, man, that, you know, stuff that you've seen starting way back. Um, but obviously, you know, you said you're eight years old or so and you got into installing radios. But like when you got to be age of driving and we turned 16, you probably like could have the Mac daddy system, right? Everybody in high school was like, Doug is the man. He's got the super system. <laughs> so what was your first like real system that you did in a, in a car or for yourself? My, well, first, the first system I had was in a I, my parents made me save up and buy my own car so it was a i saved up 1500 bucks and bought a 1982 chrysler lebaron but i thought it was pimp but it really looking back at it <laughs> like what the hell i could have sworn mine looked better you know than the pictures i see now but um and my dad put a system in that thing for me it was a single 15 mtx it was the cheap MTX. Was it the Terminator? Which one was the, like the cheap? Yeah, it was yeah, definitely one. or the Road Thunder or the yeah. Elimin Eliminator was the free air one. So right. I guess it depends. <laughs> I think it was a Terminator and a giant box in the LeBaron. Um, but then the next car I bought was my T Bird. It was a '95 T Bird, and that ended up with four twelves in the trunk. I have pictures of that one. Actually, you guys want to see some more pictures? Yeah, man. absolutely, man. All right, I gotta take you on a little. I figured out how I'm gonna handle this picture thing. Uh oh, <laughs> he's he's. We're gonna go, we're gonna go on a flight Chinese. to the past. <laughs> <laughs> a flight to the '90s. Okay, here's a picture of my old man right here. Here's the old business card. Look at that, dude. dude that's dude. awesome. That is awesome. That that's such a good name. That's such a good name for a stereo business sound man. I know, and like it started. Like I said, it started as like everything let me know if i'm driving you crazy with this stupid thing it was working better earlier i'm gonna have to hold it like this yeah that's good yeah it started as like you know boom boxes record needles all that stuff and then those pictures i showed you the black and white ones are probably when it started to transition more to car you know he my dad people just wanted it more so he kind of transitioned to getting a shop or like a couple bays and some installers. And then it kind of took off into the car audio genre. Here's my dad. He smacked his forehead on something this day. <laughs> <laughs> Here's me eating some lunch in the office. There's some pictures of my, I keyboard. can tell you're behaving <laughs> as usual. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is here's how to crimp a crimp cap with your teeth. If you don't have your crimper. Here's my friend Dave. This is probably my best friend at the shop through that time. Because he started working when he was really young. And that when I was starting to become like the head installer over there. So we kind of like figured everything out together. I still yeah, talk I to him. I just built a box for him because he is uh he works at a hot rod shop now. Oh sweet. I think people fail to realize, you know, back in the day, how big speaker boxes needed to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I realize I'm learning now. It's like, it's so much easier 
There's woofers are so much flatter. Boxes are so much smaller. Here's a shot of the old bay. Or the NSX. NSX. Is that a Porsche in front of it too? Not yeah, there's a two NSXs and a Porsche. We can't fit in any of those cars, Derek. Yeah, I know. It sucks. <laughs> oh, I love the NSX. They don't have the XL version of those cars yet. Oh, there you go. Here's a shot of the showroom. Got some Pioneer decks down there. Here's all the RCAs, all Stinger stuff. That was early Stinger stuff. So I hate to ask the question because we hadn't got there yet, but but like your dad with all this old stuff that he had, did you like put some of it in the storage unit and still have it somewhere? Or no, I tried get to get rid, of, rid of as much of it as I could. Really? Yeah. Look at all. So a lot of it went to other shops. Nakamichi, Nakamichi. MB Court. That was back when MB Court was like, and Nakamichi were, were that legit. was the high end. Yeah. Yeah. The 45 CD. This is right when I started getting into convincing my dad to carry all the high end stuff. Because he started this shop when I started working there full time. I was probably maybe 18 or so or 19, maybe. And his, his main his main brand was MTX, and they had some good stuff, but then they kind of went downhill shortly after, so we had to change it up. Do you remember when MTX had the ten year warranty on their subs? I don't know if I remember that because I probably uh, would have taken advantage of that. Yeah, that was nineteen ninety because I, I oh, okay. bought some Blue Thunders in nineteen ninety. Oh yeah, I yeah, remember. I got to yeah. replace three times <laughs> before. The ten year warranty ran out, but yeah, they quickly decided that's a bad idea. I remember the Blue Thunder stuff. That was like right before I started installing stuff. I think they had the uh, what was it, the seventy five hundreds, which were the all black ones. Was it a oh, seventy five hundred? Yeah, yeah seventy five so, hundreds. Yep. Those were yeah, beasts. That's what I had in my T bird. I have those pictures coming up soon. Here's a sweet There's more focal Hodison. There's oh, Alan. Do you guys I remember see. Alan? Yes. He's yeah. at uh, um he's at Sonic he's Electronics and NVX. Yes, now. yes, yes. Yeah. I still yeah, talk guys, to him. Oh, good. I was gonna ask you if you guys still kept up because I know that uh you know if anybody who's watching this who watched the old Sound Man like eleven years ago. <laughs> like revision. When I first started 3. watching. Yeah, you guys were like yeah, you and him had really good, you know, on camera uh synergy, definitely, but yeah, Alan and I, he knew Dave, so we kind of all met at the same time. And then he is at um, NVX Audio and Sonic Electronics now. And I still talk to him about the bass fan parts all the time. And I still talk to Dave because he works at a shop over here, too. Nice. So I still talk to both of those guys often. So, so, you're, like, so your new T-Bird that you got, was you literally got it to... To kind of do the retro, yep. I, I recreated I this that. thing. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So this is the old one. That there, there's Dave's car. I wish you could see it better. It also had hydraulics. You can see it tucking a little bit of rim. Was that an Acura? It was the two door Honda Accord. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's like the eighty. That's like the ninety to ninety three style. Oh, look yeah. at him. He's scraping. Yep. Lays baby, Wait, there's a rag top. What year was that around? So this, I bought this car in '97 when I was still in high school. So I probably bought it my senior year. That's when I graduated, and then I started working on it. Then, so this was probably two years after that. This is probably '99, I would say. Wow, that's awesome. There's my car club logo. I was in Art of Noise. I don't know if you guys heard of that car club. No, nope. there was a, there was a lot of car clubs in the '90s down here yeah. in California. Yeah. Here's that. Okay, here's my box. This is a ladder design. This what? is one. The basket is inside the box, and one basket is outside the box. And then one's inside the box, and one's outside the box. I wanted them to all the woofers to go straight across. That's crazy. And then you have to reverse the polarity of two of them. I think. Just it's almost like an isobaric. isobaric yeah. yeah, so it's yeah. like an isobaric with the woofers, two of the woofers flipped. Yeah. 
There it is wow. again. So it's like a double isobaric. That's really slick. I've never seen that before. Yeah, like a double piggyback. Or... How did it sound? It actually sounded really good. Huh. There's how the woofers are lined up. Those are the MTX 7500s, I think they are. Those are some serious woofers back in the day. Yeah. yeah. And then I ran, um, okay, now this is the how it fit in the car. Now, the spare tire well, after this was taken, I cut the spare tire well out. This is where the hydraulics sit. That way they could be flush mounted and I could mount the amps over it. That's what it looked like. I had a 2300, the MTX 2300 per two woofers. So I had two 2300s. That's dope. And then I had like a four channel and a two channel. And then I had to cut the deck lid out. So to get some airflow through the back, which I regretted, but you know, the, yeah, all, those, you know. all the white amps with the links. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Nice. I've got that. That's that's the kind of stuff I wish I saved. But you know, what are you gonna do with all this old junk? You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. it gets to a point where you yeah you can't save it all. That's yeah. no doubt. Oh, I see a compact disc logo and a what is that? Is that a? Oh, this is an Acura. This is when I started doing dash mods kind of stuff. This was the Acura RSX. I actually cut the radio out perfectly and just flush mounted the Pioneer screen in the old radio face. That's awesome. It it, it was much such a blessing to get iPads over this old stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you to mess with it. Like this screens in cars and DVD players was like the their bees junk. knees back in the day yeah you know that's what that <laughs> was pre to what we have now yeah uh when you watched the first the very first fast and furious and he's playing grand turismo before the race you yep. have it. yep oh i have a cool picture of a um hummer we did i gotta show you let me know if i'm boring you with the pictures we can kind of go back to some of this no more. no we're digging them man you, okay. you keep going so this rsx had a focal and an extant amp do you remember those chrome extant amps Yes, they were so, awesome until you had to mess with the pins or one of them fell out and shorted the whole amp yep. out. That I remember having awesome. the little that you had to have the jumper chips to yep. change the crossover settings. Yeah, what I mean, that's the thing I never get, right? When when people do when amplifier companies do that, what are they thinking? Seriously. I mean, I, I liked it because you could set it and close it up and you be no done. one could mess with it. A customer yeah. couldn't mess it up. You know, that's but, true. They didn't have any external gain or they couldn't turn up the bass or anything mm-hmm. from the outside because they had to take the cover off and do any. Yeah. They had to come to you for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could, I could see how the installers would like that because you know, anything you leave exposed is going to get yeah, something to screw. A up. lot of guys, the first thing they would do is go home and mess with it. They think they're going to squeeze a little bit more out of the system after you install it, you know? Yeah, Which is probably true because you you want to detune it a tiny bit for some people. Yeah, so they won't. But then they go right in and try to mess it up. So is that a what? What is that? That's a widescreen. Um... Yeah, that's a seven inch in a Chevy dash. So this is like pre dash mod kind of dash mods. This is cool. The DVD player and the deck were down here. Are those? Yeah, is that a Pioneer? Pocket. Yeah, that's that pioneer. little. That what was that pioneer called? It's not the ODR stuff, is it? I don't know, but that little double rotating face. Oh, look at that! Yeah, somebody in the chat's cool gonna know exactly what that is. Yeah, like I wouldn't mind having one of those around either. It's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they got them like that with the old thirty pin iPod docks on them. Yep. This is a PlayStation Two in the glove box. Oh, nice. The AC controls are below the PS2. This is one of those 5-1 Dolby Surround Panasonic decks with the built-in the center, center channel. channel. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude. Center channel. The flip-out flip out center channel. Yeah, it's like dope. a one-inch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that looks like my old car. This is Dave Scion. He had... Oh, this is a pre-dash mod, dash mod before iPads. I like I I was looking through these pictures and I had to do a double take because I just did a iPad in one of these dashes and it looked like just like this ten inch screen in the Scion. The, he did a diamond box with four fifteens. Wow, jeez! And that That's little dumb. car, I that thing thumped. 
it thumped pretty hard. And that was the cheap MTX 3500s, I think they were. But man, that thing bumped. Here's my Acura. I had a CL. This was after the T-Bird. The some of these had an OEM navigation screen. I got the one without nav, and I did one of my bezel trim jobs and put a eight inch Pioneer touch screen. This might be a picture. Oh, this was with the six inch. <clears throat> when the touch screen came out, I opted for the smaller screen because touch screen was so cool at the time. Yeah, it was could, revolutionary. Could, <laughs> yeah, it was a resistive touch screen, man. That was yeah. one of the best. It was like, what in a car? You and had that's to a, touch that's it like a, 10 times to get it to yeah. do anything. Yeah. You had to poke at it. That's a Nakamichi single din six disc changer. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, those were the dope. CD oh, man, 75, I, that thing. I think is what that was. Yeah. I loved that thing. And got some awesome set up. There you go. That's the first um, digital DSP I started using the audio yeah. control DQX. Yeah. It had a little controller you plug into it, and then you can go through and set the crossover points. So you could do active on a set of components with this. I so still, these, I think they still make those. They probably do. Those are awesome. That yeah. thing was bitching, man. So this is the tweeter amp, my mid amp, and my sub amp. And then I could control the crossover settings for the tweeters. And it had band pass for the mids. And then this ran two eights, had two eight inch subwoofers in the spare tire well. Those LR series of Audison, they were they were pretty nice. It was I think it might have been one of the first nice amps I ever bought. Yeah, those are really good. Some of this stuff kind of was like never as much power as you wanted, but yeah, you know, they were nice and sounded really good. That's an eight inch screen in the visor, all the wires went through the post. It wasn't easy as easy to take good pictures back then. You didn't really know what it's going to look like yeah. either. You don't know what it's going to look like. Look at all that dust. <laughs> Just close. You wish. think these are going to be magazine worthy when you take them. <laughs> Kids these days are so spoiled. I know. You had to go get them developed. You know, there's a DQX that all fit in the spare tire well. There's my DVD player in the uh, rear center stash. There's Dave's Civic. This one had four fifteens in oh, it. Oh, there you go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's bumping. I think those are sixty five hundreds. I might be butchering the MTX model numbers. It's been a while. That yeah, that sounds right. Again, somebody will that correct stuff, us. Yeah. They'll know. All right, now this is, best, this is the best. This is the best system right here Save we ever put out. <laughs> There's the. This is a H two. We did the titanium elite subwoofers. Do you remember those? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think there's With a, the little lights in them. Yep. They had the lights in the cone. Yeah, there you go. You can see the lights lighting up right there. This is a little fuse distribution block thing. Yeah, the DD10. Yeah. And there's us working on the amp rack. So this is the time you guys were still mainly doing your your installs outside. Yep. Everything was outside. And even even when you started like filming your stuff ten or eleven years ago, didn't you? If I remember, yeah, that was right, at this same do, location. It was, yeah, because I yeah. remember most of your stuff was outside then. Yeah, shoot. When my dad moved in this location, I was probably fifteen or something like that. Wow. I mean, you guys are kind of blessed with the weather yeah the weather's too, right? nice so yeah like don't... when it it's when it rained we would complain but it's like still not very cold and we had an overhang so it's like never too cold to work i, I was blown away when i seen started seeing car audio content on revision three i i'd always <laughs> been on there for like tech stuff i was like dude i got a car audio on revision three i know we caught the tail end of the revision three thing you know i think they're trying to scoop up as much people as they could and then discovery channel acquired it yeah and i just don't think they ever did anything with it now this is the h2 the, the customer re requested a din-sized ps2 
so you had to break apart a PS2. And... Oh, yep. nice. So I dismantled the PS2. And man, I failed so many times. I just kept <laughs> returning it. <laughs> <laughs> packing it up and, and taking it back to Best Buy. I can I, see I the I guys mean, look, look on the guy's yeah. face when it's things all apart, and you're like, "Yeah, yeah it just didn't work, man." Man, I was good. I was like heating the void, uh, the warranty void stickers up, all nice, and taking them off clean. <laughs> but look, I hid the guts like in the side, up it on the other side. That's awesome. And I had to steal a ribbon cable out of a DVD changer that we had. To, that was a little bit longer. That's a crazy man. And he got That's his din sized one. There's never another one out there, dude. I guarantee you. If anyone else got that to work, <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. we're dude, waiting I would, for that. I would even know eBay. how to where to start with it. Oh man, but well, see, like that's one thing I really got to thank my dad for because he kind of let me do whatever I wanted, and then if I fucked anything up, he would kind of, you know fix it for me you know <laughs> so like i had a lot of freedom which i don't know if i would be able to do you know if my kid was out there hacking on cars i'd be yeah, yeah cringing, that's money you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good that he gave you that leeway kind yeah of or he didn't creativity. or he didn't realize what i was doing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's low column a low column b <laughs> yeah there's that subwoofer yeah those are awesome so those woofers you could dismantle the entire woofer and and we painted the baskets at the shop because you could take the whole cone out and everything. That's all. I, yeah, I never had one, but yeah, those are cool. Yeah. No glue or anything to assemble it. I believe we did the laser etched windows. There's the amp rack before the cover. That's probably like the biggest system we did there. That's a, that's uh, a dope install. I bet that one took a while. Yeah. You want me to keep going with these? I got a couple more. Yeah, yeah man. keep going. We okay. See them all. all right, because these are so boring to me. This is like old. <laughs> <laughs> Digging up old stuff. That's like. So this is my buddy's Tacoma. That thing's probably worth 20000 right now. Man. That was they're selling them. <laughs> what was that? This is an S runner, too, I think. Yeah. This had the focal utopias in it, baby. Ooh. Yeah. Those were like, what are they, $3,500 a set or something? Yeah, they were so expensive. Beryllium tweeters. Oh, those are like $3,500 for the tweeters now. This might oh, be the, okay. this might, this might be pre beryllium. Okay. This is for, is that, before is the, that like, is that, is that like one of the, um, you know, one of the, uh, things you have to get from outer space it's not something they make in in, in the in the world the beryllium. Yeah, unob unobtainium, unobtainium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why we kill all the avatar people to get the beryllium yep, to get there the beryllium go. for our tweeters <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's this had utopia 15s in it what wow down firing box and we put the amps in the bed if I could extant baby. There we yeah. go. Chrome two awesome. two thousand watts, one per woofer. And then the four channel for the highs. Yeah, those extant one thousand Ds, those were the dream amps back in the day. Yeah, I think they, they were, were like, like twelve hundred bucks. Twelve hundred, yeah. Twelve hundred yeah. piece retail. I love those. Those are bitching. Ooh. Here's, what's that, what's that metery? That's that metery thing I see there. That's a, <laughs> it's a little, is you that, know, one of those analog meters. Is that is that a pyramid? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the analog meters that came on the audio bond, or is that what yeah. it is? That's right. Yeah, Eternal Flame series. Yeah, yeah. This is before they did the flames. Yeah, <laughs> that's the same amp that's in my Volkswagen. This box is so big, but the woofers that are in it are the flat Morel. Elate woofers, I think they're called. They're really flat, shallow, 10 inch woofers that take a really big ported box and they bump. <laughs> so, what I guess, what's the point of having them flat and shallow? Then I know. I think it's like a home speaker that ended up on the car side or something. Right. But yeah. they sounded so good. But um, 
with a with low power. So this amp has you know what probably four hundred watts maybe of of uh, power on the five and six bridged, and the woofer, if it would it would have start flapping around too much. The impedance would drop and shut your amp off. So you don't want to put too much power on them because it's a shallow woofer. So I guess the excursion, hmm. they oh, wouldn't like uh, the morel stuff is good stuff, but kind of weird. Terry good. December 30th, 2005. Maybe that was accurate. I don't know if I set my date on my, wind up camera back then <laughs> you left it on 12 <laughs> zero 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 <laughs> that's that all the old cool, pictures man. i thanks, got yeah thanks for showing us those that was yeah, no uh no, definitely a throwback so i mean we we talked about you know you starting at eight years old doing the installs and saw some of your leeway there to pull apart playstation and make them den size but you know my thought is if if dude i mean this is all like candy to me and Rob seeing all this stuff. And I knew you just kind of grew up around it. So it was just second nature to you. But what do you, um, you know, how do you feel like, I know you like Macintosh. Okay. But what about anything else? Is there anything that you gave up or, or didn't give up that you would never give up any piece of cardio equipment? I gave up a 15 inch stroker that I wish I kept because back then woofers, not all of them dropped low so the strokers didn't really drop low so you had to have the big the big stroke Rob, I have Rob's a, getting ready to drop low and show no, you something does he have an 18 inch right there it's a oh he has it <laughs> the 15 inch Dang, Doug's like baby. i agreed to come here for one reason <laughs> <laughs> hey that one that the surround looks nice on that too the spider doesn't look faded at all yeah and they, they actually make recon kits for these now that you can oh, okay. buy so yeah that looks new looks fresh and then you know i wish i ordered the giant macintosh two channel when it was available the one that has the big transistors or whatever sticking out of the front i don't remember the model number yeah i know which one you're talking about those were pretty special i guess because there's not that many of them out yeah I don't know. was it a was it a dealer only had a custom order it type thing yeah you could there, it was available in the dealer catalog and you know i should have grabbed i should have convinced my dad that he needed one on display you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah dean just he got one in that he had sold back in the day and he kind of walked through the manual and the little book the sales oh book. man dude it was it's so awesome that it's just so classy even yeah. if this, this amp could not be any better than any other amp but when you go through that experience it's like yeah whatever you say i don't care what you say this is the best amp ever yep Everyone always thought they were the best. In the 90s, if you saw Macintosh amp, you were, it was like, whoa. Yeah. That was a big deal, you know? Yeah, and that's that's when uh, Clarion had just bought them. And so that's when they went into car audio because before that, they weren't really into it. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of the techs out there who work on amplifiers, they'll kind of say what you just said. They weren't really that special, like, as far as components go on the inside. But man, it's like I tell every company now that makes amplifiers, the VU meters make an amplifier sound better. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care, right? It's got to look good. And then it just gives you that mental, you know, that mental feeling in your head, hey, this is going to sound great. But yeah, you guys got to learn, make some, put some meters on your stuff. Yeah. And the guys at Macintosh really urged you to go with the Macintosh deck if you're setting up a Macintosh system. And I think that's a lot of the difference you'd hear is in that Macintosh deck because those head units were significantly better than your other choices. There was only right. a few choices, you know what? Denon had a couple good head units yeah. back then um, that were super high end. Clarion had one that copper chassis one or something like the that. DRZ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Or one of those that was similar to the Macintosh head unit it was probably yeah. shared some of the same technology, but. And then what else was there? I mean, for a high end head unit back then for a car, Eclipse was the, kind of off brand high end, but yeah, they, they yeah. weren't and like on the same Alpine level with their yeah you know, with their F one F one status. Probably. Yeah, that might have been late though. When would yeah, when was been. the F one? That was yeah. early two thousands, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. Before yeah, Macintosh was probably, but those yeah. were yeah, those were really. 
I mean, at the time, pretty good, but not probably at the same level you're talking about. Yeah, even like the Nakamichi was like a step, a noticeable step down. Yeah. You know, they had a CD 700 or something pretty nice. One of their yeah. higher end decks. That Denon was... and Macintosh even sold just VU meters in a single den for yep. like $400, four dollars or $500. Yep. That's another thing I wish I had is that Macintosh VU meter. Yeah. Because yeah, I just, when, I had, when we eBay. had that stuff, yeah, I know. It was like 600 like, bucks. Man. It was like nothing that costs that much new. <laughs> I just wish I had the new one, you know. Yeah. But man, like when you when it was available in the catalog, you just didn't think that it wasn't going to be available one day. So there was no like urgency or I didn't think to collect anything. Right. A friend of mine, Brad at Legends of Car Audio, he's probably watching right now. He collects a lot of the old stuff. He's always sending me pics. He sent me a big Macintosh amplifier, actually. A, yeah, we big, saw that. The yeah. 4000M. 4, yeah, the yeah. big six channel. Ooh. Yeah, that was a that was a cool video because you were like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want to get that thing fully refurbished if I can at some point. Yeah. I don't even have a car for it though. Well, I mean, you got another project, right? I need to add yeah. a car. There you <laughs> go. Oh, put it in the base fan. <laughs> I could <laughs> for the mids for the highs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mids and highs. <laughs> uh. So uh, let's, I guess we need to step back a little bit. So we talked a little bit about, you know, growing up in the shop and, you know, the things you had to do then, but um, I guess I'll just jump forward a little bit because obviously, you know, time here is, is of the essence. We've already been quite a bit and there's just so many questions I have to ask, but check out that cup. That's the limited edition, by the way. I sent one of those to Doug. I think I sent one to Steve Mead. I probably got like eight or 10 of them made ever. Yeah, I got so, one. Yeah. Sean's got and, one. And Doug, Doug pointed out on the bottom it was made by some fly kid named Shutter. Yeah. <laughs> Custom. Yeah. Custom made some by artist Shutterfly. Named Shutterfly. <laughs> right. Derek we, we had that person like, carving it out, you know, <laughs> airbrushing it the whole time. You didn't do but, them like like the scene in Ghost, you know, you're shaping it and yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no. hand-formed so, so, clay mug. <laughs> so my question is like, you know, I I'm not sure how many people in the chat here, but I know Rob and I started off watching you like way back when you, you know, just started filming, I think was around 11 or so years ago. We went and looked back and saw some of your real old stuff where you had your shades on and your, you know, like your cool jacket and you're just kind of like, yeah, man, this is, this is how you do this. But oh man, those old videos are the worst. They're funny. But my thought is like, what, what got you into thinking about, Hey, I'm going to film this experience of a car audio shop was it because there were so many other reality shows at the time and you just thought it would be you know cool to show people what goes on in a car audio shop or what was your thought behind that yeah i mean reality shows were big and then youtube was new i mean it wasn't brand new but it was like newer for the mainstream what was that 2008 or something like that that sounds like a long time ago no that's right yeah it's about okay. 2008 2009 i think so it was kind of like you know you watch sh uh, shows like American Chopper and stuff like that, and and then there's YouTube. So to me, it's like a no-brainer to just film what's going on at the shop. And, you know, in the beginning, it was to just try to market and show people what happens at the shop. Probably wasn't the best marketing looking back because we're like <laughs> doing stupid stuff on there. But um, luckily, it wasn't very popular in the beginning. So we had a lot of time to goof around and do stupid stuff without getting into trouble, you know, or harming business or anything like that. And then um, later it started to help when we moved into the newer shop. And, you know, that's when I, I was going to build that shop up and take it over. And when my dad decided to retire, he was actually diagnosed with liver cancer and decided to retire and I didn't want to do it without him. So that's why um, we closed the shop. And I already had the iPad kit stuff going. So I'm like, I'm just going to go this direction. And that's not something I really talked about a lot or at all. Because, you know, I didn't want to, like, get too personal on YouTube. But he uh, he beat it and he survived and he's retired. So he's chilling now. That's but, awesome. Yeah, at that time it was pretty scary. Um but man, that business was so hard and seeing it decline from what it was back in the day 
it just looked like a slow decline, you know, and I don't even know how, what, how it is now, comparatively speaking to that time, if it's gotten better for people or, you know, or if more shops just closed up or, you know, what, you know, what, I don't know what the status is of the industry. Uh, some of my friends work at shops and they're successful, but there's fewer shops. So it kind of boiled things down to the specialty guys who are able to, you know, keep making money at it. I think that's how it is now. It's pretty niche, high end installs. Not a lot of Best Buy throwing the radio jobs going mm -hmm. around. It's, it's yeah. the people people that shop on Amazon versus the ones who go in and don't really have, you know, a cap on their wallet. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard Those to the... profit reselling like that, you right. know. And right. I remember when Best Buy came into town, my dad was so worried and that was nothing compared to Amazon coming to town. You know, that's like, you're worried about Best Buy, but like there's a larger yeah. enemy right behind it, you know? Yeah, for so, sure. It's, it's one of those things is a blessing and a curse. Cause you think about, you know, how easy it is to order stuff off of it. But then you also think, wow, we're really killing the local businesses yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I, I was out of car audio for a while and I'd watched the videos before and I came back and the first video I think that brought you back to my attention was the million dollar band pass. Mm -hmm. So I, I caught it like a couple through and I was like, dude, I was just in raptures. So I'd go to watch it. Then I was like the mule. I was like, oh man, I got to follow this. So I'm following that. Then at some point I realized you're doing a video every day and I don't realize what that takes at the time because I'm not doing YouTube. When I start doing YouTube and I think back, like, how is he doing a video six days a week? Like, I don't think people understand the amount of work they that that takes besides the work that you're actually doing in the videos. Yeah. yeah. Rob and I talked about this before, and we're always curious how, how, and you do like seasons, right? So you do it for months at a time every day. How did you do that? To stay I, sane? Oh, man, I think I only did it for about a year every day. You know, and that's like when because I was always trying to game the YouTube algorithm, you know, and that's when you had everyone was uploading every day and that really helped. But, you know, a lot of the benefits you get from that kind of go away once you stop doing that. But at that time, we were getting a lot of views, man. And it was really popping, but it's unsustainable because like I would make a plan to film a project or a piece of the project and then. I have to be off at a certain time to edit. And if anything gets in my way or screws my schedule up, you know, it like screws, it's like another hour I'd have to work that night or so, you know? So it's just, you end up getting mad all the time. You're pissed off. You can't be messed with. No one can bother you, you know? So it's like, that's what you have to do to do that, you know? And it so helps. Were you literally rolling one like every night? Were you were you uploading it for the next day? Or were you a little bit ahead? Like, did you get a week ahead or something? I think or? I would. Fi I think I would film for three days, and then edit for two days, and then, and then we went to th when I was at three days a week, I would film it, and then edit it. I think I would edit it the next day and then film and edit. So it was back and forth. Oh, and you, did that... you always see the comments of people like, "Well, why didn't this finish that?" Like, dude. Like, how long do you think these projects take? And then to edit a video. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard. And, like, there wasn't so much going on in those videos looking back. You know, it's just like I was trying to figure something out, too. So I was trying to figure out the motor swap of the mule and then edit a video. So if something didn't go right, I'm like, oh, shit, what do I have to? I have nothing to put together, you know? So it's like a little bit happening in each video. It's kind of like eh, there's so much give and take, you know? And those videos were so short. I don't even think that would be attractive now if I were to even do that, you know. I don't even know. Because that's YouTube's such a different it, place it's hard, now. It's hard to learn it, man. They yeah. they change the rules all the time. It's like Robin yeah, and and just, talk about. It's just you don't know. Yeah, and people's tastes kind of evolve and, you know. Yeah. Well, now, There's so much you're... good content on YouTube now. Now you're like head-to-head -head with TV shows. Right. You know? right. So it's like... Well, and Look. now you're you're a bit of a, a meme master. Like the, the the thumbnails of the Star Wars thumbnails, <laughs> freaking genius, dude! Freaking genius. <laughs> that, that's the best part. I go every time just to see what the thumbnail is. Like, all right, oh, I have fun with. I have Rob, fun. Rob with Photoshop. says that he wants to be a meme too. So you, 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 we've given you the. <laughs> I'm a, I make myself a meme. I, I make myself <laughs> a meme. So you really, you just add on to it. 
<laughs> I'm gonna have to roast all you guys in the episode. Yeah, you have to. Oh, roast. Yeah. You have to roast us. It's very, so very my, easy. So my, <laughs> my my other thought with with this whole progression with what you're doing is the iPad mounts. Like that obviously was a turning point for you, right? Because you just became pretty much the iPad Dash guy. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you created the mounts, and they just kind of blew up. What was your you know, what kind of led to that? Was it just the fact that you wanted it yourself or did you have a lot of people requesting that or, you know, kind of what happened with, with the, with that area? Um, I mean, that's just something I kind of pushed into when I saw there was a lot of interest there, you know, looking at the old pictures, I was already modding dashes and I got into YouTube. So when the iPad came out, that was like a no brainer to get that up in a video, you know? So, and that blew up huge i was like on all these blogs and stuff and everyone's making fun of me my sunglasses and i was chewing gum in the video (laughs) i was like oh i thought that i thought i looked cool in that video you know and you know you start to like look at yourself sometimes like why did i do that why did i put that online yeah what's the best when when someone pauses your video and shows your face in a funny in a funny position that's the best yeah (laughs) now it's like i don't i like make fun of myself now as much as i can it's the only way to feel better about it, you know. Yeah, it's the best about being an idiot on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but the that was so popular. I'm like, oh, this is like I have to figure out how to do more of this. And a lot of people requested it at that time because it just popped on on online. So everyone's like, I want that. And I was getting calls from all over the place. And then I was doing them by hand each time, trying to figure out the best way to do it. And then um I actually had a friend approach me that was doing uh, CAD and injection molding. And this is the part he helped me get going. So this is a one piece injection molded plastic tray. It has slots for the magnets at the top. So it holds the iPad. You could flush mount that tray into any car, but um, actually sold my house and had $14,000 left after the transaction to buy the aluminum tool for the, for this mold. Oh dude, that had to be so scary. Like you and that's, your house and that's, is, that's that. cheap too. At 14 grand for a uh, hard tool, you know, is like, I was scared that the thing would work. Cause we're like, it was like a buddy discount through a buddy, through a friend. He knows a guy who can, you know, was, and I had to risk a lot of money on that. And then it worked out. And that's, I sold a lot of those, man. And, and is this video here we're looking at, is this the first one? Cause this is one that has four and a half million views. I was trying to find the one with the most views. Oh no, it. that's, that this might have not overshadowed original. the first one. Yeah. Cause they and didn't the first have one, the it's me. I'm like dressed up like Fonzie. <laughs> I got to find I'm it. Chewing gum. I'm going to stop sharing real like... quick and find it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I tried to be a douchebag for the video. <laughs> I think it's called iPad in car or something like that. Yeah, those those, I, those iPad mounts, you know, you see them now. That's it's kind of the uh, gold standard for people doing doing iPad dash mounts. Yeah, man, an iPad with that Sony RSX GS9 head unit is such a good combo because you could do high res files right from the iPad to the head and unit and use the it. DAC in the head unit instead of the and iPad. the app. Right, they have an app too. With the GS yeah, I was using um, I was using a uh, Onkyo HF player, I think it's called, because it would do it would play the 5.6 megahertz DSD files native. Oh wow, Macintosh needs to do that because they got an app where you can play music with the VU meters. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I've used that in the F one fifty. I'm such a noob. I can't find your freaking video. Oh, no. Let me see. Can I send you a link in this chat right yeah, over here? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Let me Do see it, in, the, can uh, it. in the private chat. I, I, I search for iPad in car sound man. And oh, what are they scrubbing me from the internet? Maybe. 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 There it is. Well, there's part two, iPad in car part two. So I found the second one, and that one's like 427,000 views. So I thought that first one would. Well, there it is. New iPads and car dashboards. Oh, maybe I renamed it, it at some there point. There you go. That's 1.1 1. 1 million views seven years ago. Here, let me share. I'll see if this is the right one. <laughs> no, 
No, nope, that's not it. <laughs> that's not it either. <laughs> I managed to look worse in that one than my than the original oh, one I'm talking about here. That is funny. Yeah, I can't I can't find it. I'm just there's part two, so it's got, I mean that's eleven years ago. Wow. So if I if I go to this one, I should be able to maybe you had the one before it in there. Nope. Oh, oh you get tagged. Ooh, copyright strike. Uh oh. Uh oh. You better go what back happened? and look. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> it won't play it. Gold lion. Oh, what oh, the heck, dude! I've had yeah, that. Man, I get, like I get so video? many. I get so many videos demonetized and copyright flagged, and for the Benihana stuff. <laughs> what do you mean, Benihana stuff? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the, the the church guy. I can't remember his name. Oh, the oh, Benny. Yeah, what is yeah Benny the dude that. Yeah, Benny Hinn. Yeah, Benny Yeah, Hinn. like for just any <laughs> random song or, man, they really scrubbed this thing from the internet. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, this is this this is part two, and this one's uh, April 11th, 2010. I can't believe it's been that long ago, but I guess the I know that's have really... been out for, they have been out for a while. That sounds weird. Let me see if I can. Uh... Somebody in the chat needs to find it for us. You guys do that. Well, I don't, yeah, we don't have to harp on that one thing too much, but just, so did you, you have like a patent or anything on that now? So if anybody else tries to do it, oh, you found it. Yeah, I have a, I got a, oops, let me mute this. Yeah, I got a patent on it. And I just tried to, oh, dude, this is a stupid Windows computer. <laughs> Copy paste. Can you can you go to the I'm private... my son's streaming setup over here? Yeah, you see the private wondering... chat in your. Uh... There we go. There you go. That got it. it. Okay, cool. Got it. If anyone's wondering, this isn't my gaming setup. Uh, yeah, my right. son's got <laughs> LED lights all over the place. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna share the screen here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Dude is up oh, with the glasses. Y'all gotta see this. I'm gonna go full screen. Hey, oh, I got a JL is... Audio shirt on. Hashtag not Mac- sponsored for this. Yeah. <laughs> with my Macintosh amp. Uh, I can turn the audio on, I think. So that's the you, day the first iPad came out. That's the day. So one you had to go stand in line and like sleep on the road to be able to yep. get it. Yep. You had to give your arm and a leg. So you had to get ready as soon as, as it dropped. Yeah. So we went out. I think, you know what? I think, uh, Alan's brother stood in line at Best Buy to get it, and then I started taking apart my Tacoma dash. And then we got the video up that same day. So that all the iPad news was coming out. Everyone's talking about the iPad. Uh, so you got it like right hot off the press then. Yep. So the iPad was released, and then you're like, ooh, I put it in the car. Check it yep. out. First one, baby. Because I, I, I thought everyone was going to do that. I thought I was just trying to beat everyone to the punch, you know. But yeah. took people. Ah, people. there's a Mac. Ooh, 406M. I love that amp. That's probably yeah. one of my favorite pieces of equipment. Is that 406M? Dude, that you had the Macintosh, had the iPad on day one, the sun. You look like you were about to leave and steal someone's grill right after this video. <laughs> 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 there's the gum i see the gum you're chewing they're talking yeah. about i probably would have if, if i didn't have to edit a video that night yeah that's right <laughs> you know but YouTube yeah, that, that kind of looks like a, a kenwood radio now right it's about the same size oh man i just did a i should have sent another picture i did a uh fin- just finished a dash mod for a 12.9 inch ipad pro in this same dash wow it looks well, good know- the funny thing is that first generation iPad was still probably higher resolution than the brand new Kenwood 12 inch you that's, can get right now. That's true. Yep. And so much easier to navigate also. Right. Yeah. The, you know, we, that's Rob, the best thing about it. Oops, sorry. We joke about this all the time. It's like they, uh, they just, they're light years behind, you know, Apple, mm-hmm. any of these head units. It's like, why do they even try anymore? Why don't they just, have it so whatever's on your phone is kind of transitioned over to the radio because I mean they're starting to with the CarPlay I guess yeah it's still not it's the same very, mm-hmm. you know but it that's probably the best so far I would think but I haven't even played with CarPlay and stuff that much I'd rather just have an iPad with that Sony you know and be done with it then you could update your software you're not stuck yeah you know 
I, I cardio manufacturers are the worst user interfaces in yep. existence. Yep. I know they have yeah. still haven't even changed. I look now and I'm like, man, it hasn't changed that much. From well, they're at the a point now where you know they're almost deciding: do we even need to update head units because almost all the cars have got the you know 10 inch or 12 inch. Yeah. Master controls, right? They control everything, so you can't. In a lot of cases, you can't even bypass them anymore. I know in a lot I, of cases you don't even people don't want to. They sound so good now from the factory, and that's kind of been another encroaching dilemma. Well, you yeah, know, because was... back in the day when at my dad's shop, cars would have no radio or speakers. You could buy a car stripped down with no radio or speakers, and they had to bring it to the shop to get an antenna put on it, a radio, and the, you know, we just didn't have them in there. And that's you can't do. That's not a thing anymore, you know. And now, now, yeah, now you're battling. You know, do people want? ipad dash kits anymore when they've got a 12 inch screen from mm-hmm. gm or whatever so i mean is that is that kind of concern you for moving forward about how the the dash kits are going to go with the ipads or i think i was concerned about it a few years back but now i've already seen it become from when i started ipads to now i mean i guess it's been 11 years that video was 11 years ago um is that right <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it, it's right. 11 years. It's so, April, yeah. April 4th, 2010. Yeah. So when people wanted well, wanted it then, it was new. They wanted the new thing in their car. Now it's more of like a, it's more of people that are doing retro-y stuff. They're doing stereo systems in a truck or an older car. It's already kind of gone old school in a way, yeah. you know? What what's the most popular kit? What size is everybody going with? Uh, it's the big ones are more popular now. I think the oh, mini is wow. still probably most popular. Yeah, because a lot of shops still buy those and they kind of put them everywhere. You could you know you could do a headrest or back of the seat thing with them or motorhome yeah, applications. Twelve point you know. nines are are they're huge. Yeah, they're huge and they look good. Yeah, some of them I get some of the dash mods I get. It looks like. Is this going to be possible, you know, <laughs> or is it going to look like a shoe box sticking out of the dash, you know, but it looks yeah. that it always ends up looking good because the screen is just so big and that floating tablet style where the tablets kind of sticking out from the dash is kind of popular with OEM stuff. You, even some of those look so dated now. Some of the early Audis that had the screen sticking up or those cars, that, the bezels are thick and the screen is small. And it like doesn't look futuristic like it did two years ago or three years ago, you know. One of floating those floating a, a lot of times will just cover up your air. Con- I wanted to do one in my old trooper, but it'll cover up the air conditioning control, so I can't do it. Yeah, I did one in a forerunner. It was a twelve point nine in a forerunner, and it hung in front of the AC controls, but it just kind of stuck out. It's probably on Facebook somewhere. I don't know. It's probably hard to dig a picture up of it up right now, but. I posted it pretty recently, but it's, uh, the radio area is probably it's wider than doubled in, but it's only about as du- doubled in high, maybe a little bit higher. So the iPad just kind of hangs down in front of the AC control. So you don't really, you don't see them, but you can reach up there. And if the iPads undocked, there's a cutout so you could see the display. So it kind of hides them, but they're still usable. I don't know if that maybe something like that would be possible. What kind of car do you have? Uh, oh, one what trooper. I, I only drive old pieces of crap. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look up the interior. I'm always looking up interior pictures. Yeah. It, it's. Oh, yeah. Plenty of room in this baby. Plenty of room. <laughs> Take that. Oh, yeah. Because you got all the, you got like those cables and stuff connecting your AC controls. Oh, yeah. Knob, huh? Well, see, now I actually have an extra 12.9 iPad now because I bought a new iPad. So that this one gets okay. retired. The Pro gets retired. So, yeah, maybe I'll make something work like that. Yeah, you'd have to, you might lose some stuff though. Or you could hang it. Yeah. So you have AC vents and then the AC controls below that. Right. And then the radio below that. It keeps yeah, your you iPad could, nice and cool. Like you could probably put those AC controls where the radio goes. And then ditch the AC vents 
and have the iPad hanging off vertically from the top. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it could hang down. Then you could have your AC controls lower. So the and iPad knows is still how long the AC is going to con- going to continue to work anyway so yeah you can always strip <laughs> the ac the down. <laughs> you just strip strip that uh, dash out and send it out rob to get, it, get that done get it molded in so speaking of that doug how many of those like mods do you still take in did you get i know you, i see them you open them up sometimes like on your show and stuff showing them off but do you get like one a week five a week ten a week how many of those do you do i don't i don't know i i think i last year I started doing it right before the pandemic, which was kind of a good move because my YouTube revenue started to drop because there's some bad language every once in a while in my videos, you know, once in a blue moon. And then yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's not very often, but you know, like, it's yeah. rare. Yeah. And it's bleeding out like, too. I don't want to, I figure. So like <laughs> the revenue dropped in half and I'm like, well, I either should just keep going and figure out how to make it up somewhere else. Cause I don't want to also rely only on YouTube if something like that could happen. So I started taking dash mods and I uh, started begging for money on Patreon and the dash mods are good. In 2020, I did about 20 dash mods. So that's about, what is that? Two, two a month, roughly. Yeah. Two a month. And that's like, that brought in a, a, a decent money. Yeah. That's good. And so I try to do a couple a month. It takes a long time though. There's a lot of drying time and sanding. Yeah. So they're like well, you know, frustrating. You always got some kind of way. hustle going on when yeah. I'm watching the video. You got some. Uh, uh, you know, that's kind of how I am. Not on YouTube though, but but it's yeah. I guess growing up, growing up in California, you got you got that in you. Yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna survive with these tax rates, right. you got to hustle. <laughs> yeah. So that was the next question. When are you getting your trailer and like moving? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Man, I love it out here anymore. Uh, I mean, yeah. the weather. I know the weather's got to be tough, and of course you grew up there, so you yeah. And it's love like the I, environment. You know, if I could make it here, it's like I don't want to leave and then get stuck somewhere else and regret moving because I know I will. I've been out here too long, and I just don't know if I would like anywhere better. And I'm established here. Everything like it would be hard to move from here. You know, like everything that makes my business run is within driving distance. And I could grab material and, you know, source everything I need to make the kits and all that. So it, I don't even have, I don't see it as an advantage. You know, I don't know if I would be better off or not. No, probably yeah, not. I, it, what area are you guys in actually around? I'm in Valencia. It's like 45 minutes from LA. Oh, okay. I grew up in Bakersfield, so. Oh, okay. You, you can kind of know. Yeah, that's probably still... another 45 minutes from yeah. here. Or you can see why so. I left California. Yeah, <laughs> if you've been through Bakersfield. Yeah, Bakersfield isn't the best. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> At, they had a big car audio scene back in the day, though over there. I don't know how. Oh it is yeah, now. Translex. I, I yeah. remember it. That's the first system I ever heard. Of. They had a Beetle uh, with two 18s in it. They couldn't even fit <laughs> them in. Uh, they had to angle them. So. Oh, that's crazy! They didn't even yeah. enough width for it. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, that it's fun times for sure. Um, the good old days. Good old days. We talk about those all the time. Man, um, I'm curious. <laughs> like switching real quick to the YouTube stuff. So hitting 100 K and getting your silver play button was that like? I don't know. I mean, kids think that's a big deal. Like my middle schooler, when I took it, when she took it in to talk about the history of her family. And they, you know, talked about all the things, grandfathers and everything. She got to the point where she showed off my YouTube plaque. It was like all the kids in the room were freaking out. I'm like, oh, it's That's just cool. a, but I'm just wondering, you know, like for you, was that a, was that a big deal when you got that? Yeah, it was a big deal, but I was always, I'm like a num like I'm a numbers person when it comes to YouTube. I'm always trying to like push the stats and get more views at that time. I don't really care that much anymore. Um but I was just like chasing the numbers. So it always felt like it felt like slightly out of reach. So it didn't feel like I never felt like successful on YouTube. It always felt like I was trying to get these numbers, but I was like right here, you know, and, and as soon as I got these numbers, I was looking at these numbers, you know, I'm already like looking ahead. So I don't know. And like, I think if my channel was bigger, it may be different. 
I would feel more like, you know, successful with YouTube if I had the Lambo and all that stuff. But I don't even know if I want that, you know. I don't well, know. I if mean, I, I, I think it's... And I don't even know if that's what, like, my content is for. I don't want the main. I, I, I'd rather be niche in the doing what I want. Yeah. Right. And, of... and I think it's hard maybe for people to understand, like, you know, you've been doing it for, for a long time. I started about 2010. So I've been doing it for kind of a long time too. We don't have, you know, millions of subscribers, like some of these kids that just started it like a year and a half ago or something. Mm -hmm. So you definitely put in a lot of work and effort, but it's kind of like, like you just said, you're still able to kind of do the things you want to do. And even though you know that you're not going to go through the stratosphere, like a Casey Neistat or, or somebody like that, but the fact that it still stays fun. I believe his I guess, name was what... Casey Nose Flat. Yeah, Casey Nose Flat. <laughs> yeah, he's got to he come kinda, back he on. He kind of even stopped yeah. making videos at this point. Yeah, but yeah, like I, I mean... don't think that daily life is sustainable. Yeah, but that's the thing too. You got to. That's the thing I had to figure out. Do I want to change my content? And am I a YouTuber or like, you know, am I a car stereo installer? You know, I'm like in this halfway point where. I don't do installs anymore, but I'm not like a full YouTuber, like a, you know, either. So and it's easy to know. get pigeonholed on it. You know, they, we talk to people all the time. Like mm -hmm. if you look at the biggest car audio focused YouTuber, it's Steve Mead, and he's at what? 850,000. Yeah. And something and like that. It's scheme yep. of YouTube. That's like nothing. You could have a tech yep. channel for a year and be over that but yeah in car audio it's as big as it gets yeah to me that's like sounding huge yeah. but yeah you're right you'll go on some other channel i was watching this bodybuilder guy that tortures himself he went to wonder boy thompson the ufc fighters gym for a shin conditioning lesson <laughs> but know. man this guy's got like millions of subscribers and millions of views per video but you know that's like a different kind of content but man, that yeah, guy's funny. It just has to be more generic, like you said. I mean, more. I don't know, but it, yeah, it's and that's amazing. what that's like the things you have to weigh out mm -hmm. if you're going to do YouTube. Like, yep, you know, especially in car audio. I mean, you, yeah, you, I mean, you, I, you better be honestly, doing it for I, the love of it. Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. it's it's impressive to get to the point of a hundred thousand for doing car audio. Like you said, if you think about how niche it is, it's like you're electronics your audio and then your car audio so you're yeah. like a, a very deep niche in that field like if you just did electronic stuff you probably have a lot of views if you did just audio stuff you probably have a lot more but the fact that you know you're deep into the trenches and, and for me for a, a while it was only old school car audio stuff i was doing so that was even deeper right because that mm -hmm. was even fewer people that wanted to watch so but you also have to enjoy it because if you don't, yeah. then you're going to burn out. And that's what a lot yeah. of people do. They get in, they start growing, and then they're like, uh, yeah, this is too much. I'm not making enough money. I'm going to have to quit. So yeah, you, and that, that's, what, that's how, it, yeah, it makes it sustainable. Makes it that's better, that's right. what I like about how I'm doing it now is I could take some time, work on the car, then I can stop and then make a video. It's like a separate project. So it's not like everything in one day. It's like not all in on YouTube. It's like I can enjoy this. Then I can enjoy making a video. Then I could do a dash mod. Right. It's like kind broken up a little up. bit. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's the thing I was able to adjust instead of burning out and quitting, you know, like people have done. Because you could also just run it too hard and think you don't like it and give up. Or you could just adjust, you know. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing other social media platforms like the newer stuff, TikTok or Instagram big? I don't see the benefit, man. You know, because it's like at this point, my YouTube, the vid each video makes decent money. We have other advertisers and stuff that kind of offset the YouTube ad sense itself. So, I mean, I don't know if I want to make free videos anymore. <laughs> you know, I already did that in the beginning of YouTube. <laughs> right. You have to pay your dues, you know. You yeah, guys know sure. that in the beginning, nobody's watching. You have to make it and put it up and then keep going talk, if you won't want it, you know. We talk it's about like, it all the time because it's like, you know, what's the benefit to us? If we if we have a product or we're like down for sound shop, of course, being on TikTok helps you because you're getting sales from that. But we'd have to go 
to TikTok and be like, hey, check out my YouTube channel. Yeah. And then they have to watch the content. And it's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. When it takes them, it doesn't help to take them off of the thing. Mm -hmm. So, and then you got, what are you going to do? Go Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. It's like, Mm -hmm. are you going to, the best Mm -hmm. way to do it would be to, to do them all, you know? But I'd rather just make a funny video and put the ads in it. And then people know you're out there. People know you're alive. And then if they want to buy your shit, they'll buy it. But I don't know, man. Like, I don't have the time to do. I don't have Instagram or none of that on my phone just because it's a distraction. But, I mean, you have to have a team or something (laughs) nowadays. Because every time a new social media app comes out, you know. You know, the, the OnlyFans can be profitable. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's a new thing. Yeah. I'd probably do OnlyFans before TikTok. Just kind of, yeah. you know, <laughs> there's you a way to make money. money that, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Well, man, we, gosh, we've already busted the hour uh, and gone past it. Obviously, we have a whole lot more we could talk about. But what we'll do is, um, you know, maybe we'll check in on, see if we can get you in. Maybe in a future show, come back and do a part two or something. We'll have okay, more, yeah, more time sure. to talk. We um, yeah, we got to drag my dad in here too for you one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, uh, we'll definitely fun. have to do that. We'd have to because he's him got in. the real old stories. That's fun. Just pre, those pictures, pre dash kit stories. <laughs> oh no! The, so the ones that <laughs> mounted underneath the dash, like with the with yeah. The, actually, with you know channels. what? I, I probably take after my dad a lot because he was flush mounting eight track players before there was a kit. To do wow. that, he'd hack, you know, do that kind of crazy That's stuff. Classic, right there. <laughs> Learn from the master. Yeah. So if people want to just... check you out. The best place to go is soundman.co. Is that right? Yeah. Go to soundman.co and you could see all the iPad stuff. Um, we have the injection molded iPad mini kits and then all the other sizes I make on, I design them myself and make them on the router. They're all CNC machined acrylic. And uh, there's magnets built into them, and there's a uh, wiring diagrams on there and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Out. Yeah, so you have the little packages there so you can show people, yeah, and then kinda... you have those right angle adapters and stuff. Yeah, they make some. Yeah, they're like on the Amazon at the top. It says Amazon Store. That's where you get to like all the ninety degree cables. Now there's stuff for other car audio here. There's template tape routers, router bits. This is all stuff that's good that you could find on Amazon because a lot of those like double-sided template tape, that stuff's from specialty, like specialty car stereo fab places will sell it to you. Right. But it's all, it's like all at a higher price, you know, and all the CA glue and epoxies that I use are on there. And that's not all epoxies are created equal, you know, the yeah, worst I mean, thing about a dash for a while, mod. So, you know, what, yeah what yeah. you need right yeah we trialed and aired all of it and like if you're molding plastic and your body work in it you don't want the body work to crack and come back yeah so that's when you're grinding it down and doing it again so you want to make sure the bond is good before you do the body work yeah like um go down a row yeah, go to the iPad 4 5 float mount kit. Uh, this one here? The Mini yeah. 4? Yep. That one is, you can kind of see the design if you click through the pictures. Yeah, you see the the magnets are laid in there at the top. Yeah, inside of the, it's yep. a two, it's two pieces that kind of sandwich together. So the magnets are wow. embedded inside. That's cool. Holds in there nice and firm. Yep. Nice and firm. Nice and firm, baby. That is awesome. Yeah, so that's where the iPad kit stuff is. You can find the YouTube videos if you search Soundman Car Audio on YouTube. Yeah, you've got a few hundred thousand. <laughs> right? Yeah, like now uh, like now I do a couple types of videos. I'll do the vlog style video with the we're building the bass van. It's going to be all NVX audio. They're one of the sponsors. So we're going to do a full NVX build. We have, uh, we're going to do six mids in each door. And then I'm going to try to squeeze 12 15 inch woofers in there. 
You need, you need a, uh, a construction adhesive sponsor, man. I know, man. I've bought so much construction <laughs> adhesive. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> you just need it. You need like a 55 gallon barrel. Yeah, that would be and then, sweet. <laughs> if anybody's well, watching, it. hashtag. There you go. Your first, it looks like your first car audio video. Oh, no. There's blow woofer. There's test your oh, yeah, amplifier. Test your amplifier. Test your amplifier. It looks like your first one. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. I remember going back and seeing this one. I just didn't I just share this with you when you told me it was gonna be on? Or no, I showed a different one. Might have been Yeah, you, yeah, it was a different yeah. one. But yeah, he's probing it, showing you how to test it with a multimeter. That's a TMA, baby. TMA, right before JL bottom, I think. Yeah. I think that was test the it. TMA first TMA. Oh, was yeah. that t- trouble mobile audio or something like yeah. that? Yeah. 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 Look at that. AC voltage is that, baby. Is TMA still around or is that just the I, don't I remember. Know. I think JL kept them around, and that was like the cheaper line or something. I don't know yep. what they did with it. I think they rolled it over into their entry level. Stuff. That's okay. That's what it was. Yeah, because yeah, I think they came out with a JL amp that looked exactly like the TMA amp <laughs> before it, <laughs> or something like that. So they probably just used it for those entry level designs, like you're saying. Well, I, I gotta say, your first video is way better than my first one, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna make any comments. <laughs> oh man, I remember watching your videos before I knew what you looked like. You didn't show your face; you were just a voice. And I was just school. a voice, and yep. I tried to, uh, I tried to make not my voice deeper voice. in some of them. People were like, "What's yeah. wrong? Did you constipate?" Oh yeah, I, I remember <laughs> that. You had the voice. It was like the radio announcer voice. That's I right. Talk like this. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's funny. It's like the things you cringe about about your old your old videos. Other people don't even remember. You know. Yeah, yeah, you just you just hope that people don't go back. And I actually removed a couple of them because they were so bad. When I went back, I said I, I can't leave that up. Oh, you can't online. do it. You got to <laughs> oh, leave no, it. I, just, I have a policy. I'm leaving them up. That's what I do. Too. I leave them up. Like, dude, I, I only pulled down like two, but they, they yeah. were literally the first and second ones. They were so bad. I still have them saved somewhere, <laughs> but you guys would never see those again. I, I'm I'm already cringy in my final form, so it doesn't matter. It, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a different a different style of cringe. Well, that's the truth. <laughs> well, YouTube yeah. is so di- changes so much too. It's like back then everyone was doing goofy stuff. There was no like there weren't. No one was acting normal on YouTube. You couldn't yeah. act normal on YouTube in yeah. 2008 and make it. You have, to be a, you have to be a lunatic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I force you to. Juan, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, we had a bunch of super chats come through while we were uh, talking with Doug, and I just, uh, I'm not sure we can pull them all back up. Rob, oh, I don't think we can back. go back that high in our software to show it. But, guys, we do appreciate you uh, hooking us up while uh doug was distracted and showing pictures and stuff and you guys were hooking us up with money you know he he, he don't care right <laughs> but no seriously uh we would just you know if you guys have any specific questions maybe um maybe a couple more minutes we'll see if uh if you want to ask any and now i know one for me would be you know some pe- sometimes people complain about how many videos it takes you to do stuff like when you build your box or when you do your base fan or whatever but I think we have a, you know, people that are just spoiled by the TV shows that they watch, right? Mm-hmm. That that look like they take twenty minutes, but literally they've taken six months to do what they've done, right? So in, in our case, a lot of cases it's just us, or maybe sometimes we'll have one person help. So when we show videos, it's because we're we're actually giving you the full pro- progress. We're not condensing six months down into twenty minutes, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the thing I think a lot of people get spoiled by with, you know, the the uh, over the air TV or the networks is that they have these huge projects they do in a short amount of time. So they expect us to do that. Yeah. And they don't they don't waste time either. So a lot of those projects are for the show. Right. A lot of the, the projects that were, that were shot at West Coast Customs, they had multiple cars that were in multiple stages of the build so they could get the shots they need for that day. But it, that's not what's happening at the business. That was the show that was being filmed, you know, on another right area of the business. So it's like TV shows are TV shows. They're not, yeah, really. nothing about a reality show is really happening, you know, <laughs> except maybe people getting mad or, you know, yeah. 
they, they or get pressured for time. Yeah, they pressure like you to get reactions out of you for the show and stuff like that. But have you ever yeah, man, building a bass fan is that's building a bass fan is not something I've done or taken on at all, really. That's why I really wanted to do it. But a lot of I give a lot of respect to the bass head community because that shit is not easy, dude. <laughs> yeah. It, it's the like is you're trying so to make it much look work. Good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe that maybe I'm wasting some time, yeah, yeah. That, you know, but um dude, it's a lot of work, you know. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> the bigger the box, <laughs> the harder it is to build. Yeah, I mean, I I see the stuff you're doing and I see EXO like having stuff, you know, metal frames installed and stuff and it's just people don't, you know, they don't really Putting get Putting springs in for this. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, and, and I, and, and you made a comment though, but that one video where he goes through and shows you like the total vehicle weight and he calculated all that stuff. I'm like, dude, that was excellent for him to even think of that. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm wondering how many it. people have slapped a lot of stuff in old vans and not even, you know, taking into consideration how much weight they're adding. Yeah. I didn't take it into consideration. I so you, all... you, you've probably got like <laughs> 1700 pounds of just construction adhesive, right? Well, I'm using birch, so I'm hoping I'm saving weight there. Because <laughs> MDF would just be insane, I think. No you doubt. Know, that shit's heavy, man. Yeah, it, it, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, did you buy all that birch before the, the price hike? or you No, some there? of it I, I, I bought, and I noticed it was really cheap. And then now it's expensive. I think I, I, think yeah. I paid 35 bucks a sheet for a first the first few. Yeah. But even that sounds too cheap. I'd have to go back and look. But recently it was maybe 60 or close to 60. Yeah. And it's like nice wood. I don't want to, I don't, I hate, and the thing I hate about MDF is just the dust and the airborne dust. Mm-hmm. It just like kicks up my sinuses. I'd rather not. And it gets and on it's every heavy. single piece of, and it's a nightmare. Shop. Yeah. yeah. And when you're done with the boxes, you could chip the fucking corner off. Excuse yeah. my language, but <laughs> that'll make you, <laughs> that'll make you really mad or you gouge so we, the woofer hole out you know we haven't seen rafa uh lately in your videos is he still around or did he get tired of you picking on him no so we just stopped hanging out at the beginning of the pandemic you know mostly for my sake because he'd be in there and he's still working with customers and right all that oh, so yeah. i'm like let's just and we were just doing he was coming over to do some of his dash mods at my shop just so we could hang out and then i think we were doing that one night a week or something like that or one day during the week and then one night but then we just kind of stopped doing it and haven't started yet you know i'm not vaccinated yet uh yeah rob is full zombie i'm half zombie so, <laughs> <laughs> so Scott, have you ever thought about... thank you oh yeah go ahead, go ahead uh, have you ever rob. thought about putting or have you put like the build videos all in one long one Oh yeah, like make like a base fan build in fifteen minute. Maybe I, I thought about doing that with the T bird. I just I don't know if I'm. Yeah. It's worth yeah. it or not, but I hear that does well. Well, I know I know Steve has done it. You know, sometimes you can link things up like in a playlist and stuff. But he took a lot of his older uh, videos for his builds, like when he like when he redid the customers. What was it? The one with the real horrible uh, install that he went and cleaned mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He took all the videos and actually made it into a single like two and a half or three hour video and re-uploaded it. And that oh, okay. was done really well too. So mm. yeah. that was a um, million dollar band pass. That'd be the one. Yeah. If, yeah. If you yeah. haven't yeah. seen that and you're watching, definitely go back and watch all those. Cause that, that's some of the best. I like the F one hundred and fifty box way more than that. Oh, did the you watch yeah, That was cool yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was a parallel sixth order with the JL W seven. Oh, that, yeah, that's right. Didn't you blow good. the first one? Did yeah, you know what? That That's one of the pieces of equipment I saved from my dad's old shop, and I had it on the shelf for years, and I always planned to use it, and then I finally decided to build the F-150 box, and I unboxed it, brand new, never been used, and the spider was just sagging like a son of a bitch. Oh, just because just that heavy cone on that woofer and that yeah. light spider, you know? So that sucker was a flopper from the beginning, and then I just... <laughs> I just tried to max it out. End it. And just end it. <laughs> the the slinky uncoiled itself inside there. I don't know what happened. And then I built it with the PSI recone kit. Yeah. Because JL stopped making the recone for it. 
and that sucker banged, man. Oh, yeah, and that's what that was that's what really box. wanted to make me do um, the Bays fan because I wasn't going to keep my truck forever. I needed a new daily, and the Bays fan could be like my new my next stereo system. You know, yeah, like, could like be your system. your fun little getaway, yep. right? Yeah, yep, and finally do a little fun finally do getaway. a Bays fan. Yeah, because back in the day, I always saw Bays fans. That was always the glory system that you wanted to build in the nineties. Like, I hope someone comes in and yeah. just <laughs> a blank check for a base fan build, you know, <laughs> that's like <laughs> what you wanted to do, even though you really didn't want to do it. You don't want to do it. <laughs> you that thought you wanted to work. do it. <laughs> Definitely. There's Brad right there. Legends of Carl. Yeah. He's my buddy. You Thank you, sir. He's a cool guy. Yeah. Brad is cool. Brad, uh, his, he's come to our, our, uh, old school stereo hangouts that we've done before he's come he's driven from kentucky to north carolina so that's a little that's kind oh, of a cool of a drive bringing the rarest stuff you can find that yeah. guy has a lot of rare he, stuff yeah. it's like oh i got three. i actually page. got three of them i've got three not just one three yeah he, three what three of anything the most rarest oh. thing oh, you yeah. can think of <laughs> Yeah, he, yeah, he's got man, at least but, three. But he was not scared when he found when he found stuff. He would drive for like you know twenty hours straight to go pick up yep. you know a lot of whatever. And I think now with with eBay the way it's kind of been treating a lot of people lately, he's just he's been burned too much. He's like, I'm just gonna have to oh, stop no. doing that. Yeah. Uh e- you got to see is, some of the stuff. I don't know if it's all on eBay, but some of the amps and stuff he has. Yeah, and, he's got he's got some nice equipment still, but I mean, yeah. I guess he can sell a lot of it straight through Facebook if he just yeah. It's probably it a better there. move because there's mm-hmm. like car audio groups and stuff, so it's kind of like yep. you're not getting just the average scammer running across a right. two thousand dollar hand built Chrome amp, yeah. you know, yeah. tube amp or something. Yeah. He buys it and then sends it off to get it fully refurbished. Yeah, Sean. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. He puts some, some money into it. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Well, cool, man. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, we do appreciate. It. I know you're busy. You know, trying to keep up your your iPad dash installs and making your videos and and create you know keeping the content going. But we do appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to come join us and hang out and going through the pictures and just talking about the old shop, talking about you know why you guys transitioned into what you're doing now. It's uh, it's really the thing that that Rob and I wanted when we started this channel was to talk with people, you know, who've been in the industry, different areas of the industry, some people that have shops, some people that you know work with manufacturers, just whatever it is, and get your your kind of spin on on you know how you function within the industry. And I think um, this has been an enlightening kind of experience to see your history of starting at eight years old, you know, installing your first system all the way up until now that you've morphed your company into something way different than it was back when your dad, you know, had the shop. So it's, uh, it's really cool. And we, you know, we appreciate, um, you as a YouTuber for sure. Cause Rob and I are trying our best to, to do the YouTube thing as well. So we're right there with you trying to make that a worthy, um, way to spend our time, I guess I'd say. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tr- it's a tough game. It, it's a tough game, and those who just were watching from the outside <laughs> just don't know unless they actually do it how tough it really is. But we uh, we do appreciate your time tonight, hanging out with us, and we'd love to have you back. You know, a different time we can maybe get your dad on too and talk about some old car audio stories. That'd be lots of fun. Yeah, anytime, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, if we could drag my old man over here, it would be fun yes. for me too to watch you guys rattle off some questions at him. <laughs> Yeah, I, I will. I will say that I we think we had our most viewers ever on this episode that I've noticed. Oh, cool. We, we yes, Doug uh, is uh, he's the star. We've got <laughs> 251 watching right now, and I think that's definitely our peak with uh, live streams. That's cool. Streamers watching. So you are the man. I don't know if it's you, the T-shirt or the mustache, but yeah, one of the three be of the those. Mustache. It's my son's gaming setup. It's the RGB. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the glow of the blue light behind yeah. you <laughs> no but seriously man thanks again for your time and everybody here who's watching we appreciate you guys as well and we'll have you on again sometime so take care and we will catch up with you next time thanks guys thanks doug